Fifth generation fighters like the F-22 or F-35, are often marketed as game changers in modern air warfare. However, their track record in actual combat remains unproven. Take the F-22 Raptor, for instance. Despite being operational for decades it has yet to engage in real-world dogfights or bombing missions. Its first air-to-air -air kill was shooting down a Chinese surveillance balloon in 2023, far from the intense air battles it was designed for. On the other hand, conflicts in Syria, Libya, and Ukraine have highlighted the enduring effectiveness of upgraded fourth-generation fighters. The French Rafale, American F-15 and F-16, and even Russian Su-30 variants have shown their value in precision strikes and air dominance roles. So, why do countries hesitate to deploy stealth fighters in real combat? The reason is simple. Losing a stealth fighter could expose its vulnerabilities, damage its reputation, and allow adversaries to exploit recovered wreckage for countermeasures. This hesitation stems from the immense cost and prestige associated with these platforms. Fifth-generation fighters like the F-22 and F-35 are heavily marketed as nearly invincible thanks to their stealth and advanced technology. A single combat loss could shatter this image, raising doubts about the effectiveness of stealth technology, their primary selling point, and deterring potential buyers on the international market. For instance, adversaries recovering even partial wreckage of a stealth fighter could reverse engineer its technology to develop countermeasures or improve their own systems. The stakes are even higher for sixth-generation programs where a single combat failure could undermine years of development and trillions of dollars of investment. In contrast, fourth and 4.5-generation fighters do not carry the same level of reputational risk. They are not marketed as invincible and their losses in combat are seen as an expected part of their operational history. This is evident in the 1996 incident where a Greek Mirage 2000 shot down a Turkish F-16. While this marked a rare aerial combat loss for the F-16, its reputation remained largely intact and the jet continues to be one of the most sought-after platforms in the global market, with modern variants like the F-16 Block 70 and 72 still in high demand. Moreover, real-world exercises have shown that lower-generation fighters, with skilled pilots and the right tactics, can sometimes outmatch their more advanced counterparts. In 2017, a German Eurofighter Typhoon reportedly scored simulated kills against F-22 Raptors during joint training exercises. Similarly, Indian Su-30 MKIs have outmaneuvered advanced jets like F-15s and Typhoons in past war games, showcasing the enduring value of upgraded fourth-generation platforms. Even stealth isn't a foolproof advantage. In 2018, Indian Sukhois reportedly detected Chinese J-20 fighters near the line of actual control, using the powerful N-011 MBARS radar on their Su-30s. Chinese officials downplayed the reports, suggesting that the J-20 may not have been operating in full stealth mode during the encounters. However, this argument seems more like an attempt to deflect criticism, rather than a plausible operational strategy. Stealth in modern fighter jets is not an on and off switch. Rather, it is a combination of design features and tactics, such as physical design, operational strategies, and control of electronic emissions, and flying without employing stealth tactics in a hostile environment risks exposing critical information about the aircraft's design and performance. While it is true that since that encounter, China has made significant improvements to the J-20 to address vulnerabilities and enhance its performance. They have also introduced new 5th and 6th generation fighters, drawing on lessons learned from the J-20. This is an area where India, as of now, struggles to compete. The Indian Air Force Chief's frustration with the sluggish pace of Tejas production is evident. HAL has yet to deliver the first 40 Tejas fighters, even though deliveries began in 2016. When it comes to exports, it's not that countries don't want to buy Indian defense products. 
several nations already use them, and the Tejas was even shortlisted for Malaysia's fighter jet tender. But the real question is if Hale can't deliver 40 aircraft to its own air force on time, what guarantee is there that it can meet demands of export customers? To bridge this gap, India needs more private players in the defense manufacturing sector. Fifth-generation fighters like the F-22 and F-35 are valuable force multipliers. They will complement, not replace, older platforms for at least the next two to three decades. Well-upgraded fourth and 4.5-generation platforms continue to prove their effectiveness in real-world conflicts. Investing in the indigenous Tejas Mark II program, while preparing for the eventual induction of the advanced medium combat aircraft, is the right path forward for India. While the offer from the European Sixth Generation Development Program should also be considered, India must prioritize absorbing new technology, whether through R&D or collaboration. India's defense budget is heavily weighted toward personnel costs, which leaves limited room for modernization. That's where the Tejas Mark II comes in. It's a smart, cost-effective solution. As an advanced 4.5 plus generation fighter, it strikes the perfect balance between capability and affordability, avoiding the financial strain of developing or acquiring fifth or sixth generation jets. The Mark II brings features like indigenously made ESA radar, IRST systems, and advanced avionics to the table, giving it high-tech capabilities without breaking the bank. The Mark II will help India refine its aerospace technology by building on the lessons learned from the MK1 program. It serves as, as a stepping stone toward ambitious projects like the AMCA and the twin-engine deck-based fighter. By testing advanced technologies such as radar systems and super cruise capabilities on the MK2, India is essentially de-risking future programs. It's also proving to be an excellent platform for testing cutting-edge weapons like the Astra missiles and BrahMos NG, which will make future integrations much smoother. While the engine will initially be sourced from the US, progress at GTRE's 130 kN twin-engine test bed facility marks a significant milestone. Expected to be operational by 2025, this facility will support the development of engines for the AMCA and contribute to refining the Cavalry engine. With upgrades targeting 90 kN thrust, the Cavalry engine could be made compatible with the MK2. The Tejas MK2 is positioned against some big names like the Gripen E and the F-16, but it holds its own with some distinct advantages. Features like the potential integration of the BrahMos NG missile give it unmatched strike power. That said, the MK2's success depends heavily on timely production and delivery. The delays that plagued the MK1 program can't be repeated if India wants to stay competitive and meet the Indian Air Force's operational requirements.